How we all doing today? Are you feeling alive? You feeling the energy? All right. Well, here's what we got. This is Mono White, Modern Legal Angels. This is my personal angel deck. So without talking too much, uh, let's just get right down to it. Now, it's not budget. This is my own deck I use. So, I mean, of course, I'm going to go all out of my own deck. I think it's a lot of fun. Like most of my decks, I like to have fun with them, you know? Uh, actually, any freaking deck in Magic really is a lot of fun. Anyway, Seraph Sanctuary. I'm only running one of these. When Seraph Sanctuary enters the battlefield, you gain one life. Whenever an angel enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Also, tap it at one to your mana pool. Rogue's Passage. Why are you running a Rogue's Passage, you noob? Well, uh, I don't know. This ga it, the game is... Uh, this deck is based around lifelink. There's a lot of lifelink and triggering abilities when you gain life, etc., etc. So, games can drag. When that happens... Let's make it so we can wrap shit up. So I added just one of these. Target creature's unblockable this turn, so obviously we're going to deal a lot of freaking damage because we're going to have some nasty shit going on. I'll show you in a minute. Then we have Amiria, the Sky Ruin. I don't even know why they put this in here, honestly. It belongs in Commander. I don't know why it's in here. Uh, you really don't need to use it, but it is what it is. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control seven or more planes, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's pretty freaking huge, all right? But it's better off in Commander, where, you know, the game's going to go really freaking long. I know this can happen in this one, too, but we're not running uh, pff, nothing but planes. We only have 19 total planes. So a total of 22 lands are going to be in this deck. Now, let's get on to some shit, shall we? Welcome to the shit show. See? No edits. No fox giving, guys. We just keep on going. All right. So here it is. We have the champion. The champion. Uh, protection from black and from red. Whenever another creature comes into play, you may gain one life. There's one of these. Honestly, you could probably use just one of these Soul Wardens. But the protection aspect is kind of cool, so that's why it's in there. Probably go with a Soul Warden. But anyway, I'm running one of these bad girls in there. Looks like Christina Aguilera. What's good, girl? Okay. And then we got Self of Spirits, 2-drop, Flying, Sacrifice Self of Spirit, Creatures You Control Gain, Indestructible until end of turn. That's friggin' dope, man. So, I mean, obviously, I'm not, I'm not gonna break down every single purpose of every use of the card, but you do understand how that works. A Johnny's Pride Mate. Only one of these, surprisingly. Whenever you gain life, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on a Johnny's Pride Mate. Down the road, dude's gonna be a beast. I'm only running one. I had two in there at one point, even three, I think. Changed it all up. Intrepid Hero. For three, tap it, destroy target creature with power with uh, power four or greater. That's friggin' dope, man. I mean, yeah, obviously it's only a 1-1, one, one, so it's easily removed. Whatever. So is everything else in modern. Let's get down to some angel business. Angel of Jubilation. Four drop. Flying, other non-black creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Players can't pay life or sacrifice creatures to cast spells or activate abilities. 3-3 three, three, Angel. That's huge. I actually had two of those in there. Took one out. Just wasn't it wasn't working how I wanted it to. Archangel of Teeths. Gotham Teeths. Four drop again. Well, that casting cost, but that's all right. That three uh, planes. Well, we're only running planes, guys. Flying as long as Archangel of Teeths is untapped. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. That's pretty huge. And as long as Archangel of Tiss is attacking, creatures can't block unless the controller pays one for each of those creatures. Obviously, no one to use it. Awesome card, though. Good old Sublime Archangel, Flying Exalted, which means whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Other creatures you control have Exalted. That's insane. So when you go to attack someone... Uh, let's say you have five creatures out, and you have your 3-5 right here. Well, you're making that, uh, if you have five creatures out, you're adding plus 5, plus 5 to it if it attacks solo. That's pretty freaking nasty, because everything else gets exalted with it, using Sublime Archangel. Nasty little card. Running two of those because of the ability. Linvala, Keeper of Silence. Ah, beautiful angel. Love that artwork. Four drop flying activated abilities of creatures your opponents control can't be activated. There is uh, maybe like I don't know four, five, six bits of control in this deck. I'm only running one of those, by the way. Um, and, and the control definitely helps a little bit. Uh, Bane Slayer Angel. It's a five drop. 
Awesome Angel. Flying First Strike, Life Link, Protection from Demons and from Dragons. It's 5 5. Nasty. We are running. One, two, three, four, four Baneslayer Angels. Here's where shit can get a little pricey. Archangel of Thune, five drop. Flying lifelink. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. It's a three, four. That is freaking nasty. Archangel of Thune, by far my favorite angel. Because we're just going to be splashing our entire side of the board with plus one, plus one counters. Every time we gain life. In some turns, we might gain three, we might gain life in three separate occasions. Holy shit. We're running four Archangel of Thunes. Gotta run four, baby. Archangel Avacyn. You little devil. It's a five drop, flying. Flash. Vigilance. When Archangel Avacyn enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. That is dope in its own. When a non-angel creature you control dies, transform Archangel Avacyn at the beginning of the next upkeep. It's a 4-4. Four, four. Let's see what that transformation looks like. Avacyn, the Purifier. Legendary creature angel, baby. I love that artwork. When this creature transforms into Avacyn, the Purifier, it deals three damage to each other creature and each opponent. It's a 6-5. That's nasty. When that does occur, we're going to be freaking wiping some shit on the other side of the board. Hopefully. You'd think. Sunblast Angel. Probably the cheapest angel in this deck. It's a six drop. Flying. When Sunblast Angel enters the battlefield, destroy all tapped creatures. It's four or five. That's pretty dope. Especially if your opponent's running heavy in creatures. Just imagine freaking wiping off anything tapped over there. Sick. Admonition Angel. Almost didn't make it. Almost didn't make the deck, because we're having, we don't have too many lands. It's not crazy heavy in lands, but it's a little nice addition in the end. It's a six drop. Creature Angel. Well, why do I keep saying that? Creature Angel. Obviously, Moss. Flying Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may ex exile target non-land permanent other than Admonition Angel. I'm going to call it Ammunition Angel. I like that. When Ammunition Angel leaves the battlefield, return all cards exiled with it to the battlefield under their owner's control. Another means of control in the deck. Not bad. Oh, you're not an angel. Where'd you come from, Elshnorn? You little sexy son of a bite. All right. It's a seven drop. Praetor. Praetor? Praetor. Vigilance. Other creatures you control get plus two, plus two. Creatures your opponents control get minus two, minus two. This card is stupid sick. Yeah, there's a lot of high casting costs in here. You're probably wondering, what the hell, Moss? What are we going to do to freaking bring all these creatures out? Well, I'll tell you in a second here. Avacyn. Angel of Hope. Eight drop, baby. Ah, such a gorgeous card. Flying Vigilance, Avacyn, Angel of Hope, and other permanents you control are indestructible. That is a nasty card to have in your deck when you pull it out. She gonna go crazy. A Johnny Goldmane. Yep, yep, I'm running a Planeswalker. Oh my god. Maybe not even the best Planeswalker for this, but I like its abilities. You gain two life ability. That whole gaining life thing, I'm fond of that. Also, the plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control, those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So just splashing plus one, plus one counters on each creature. That's insane. Put a white avatar creature token on the battlefield with this creature's power and toughness are each equal to your life total. We're going to have really freaking high life, and we're going to make good use of that large creature if we get him out. Here's how we're going to get all those cards out, buddy. We're going to ramp this shit using mirrors. For only three, tap it, add two colors to your mana pool. I'm only running three of these. Uno, dos, tres. Only because it's colorless mana, so I didn't want to flood it too much. Gold mirror, because a lot of my stuff is casting cost, uh, like two or three uh, planes, so that's why I only have three of those in there. Add a planes to your mana pool. It's a one, one, two drop. Not bad. We're running four gold mirrors. I said, you know what? I'm a cat. I like ya. A cat is a monument. I love ya. Legendary artifact. White creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one white vigilance warrior creature token with vigilance. 
I just I said vigilance twice. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I mean, I was gonna splice. I was gonna splash in a bunch of tokens in this deck, like using uh, what's it called? Um, Specter's Procession. But I didn't end up doing it. I actually had two in the deck, and I took them out though. Um, and I know having a bunch of creatures with Exalted would help if you had a ton of tokens out. But there's a lot of other elements this deck is working on to stay alive. Contagion Engine. Oh, you are amazing. Only one of these, by the way. Contagion Engine. Here, one of these back here. There you go. Contagion Engine. When Contagion Engine enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. That's badass alone. But it gets better. But wait, there's more. For four, tap it proliferate then proliferate again that means you choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them then give each another counter of a kind already there then do it again we're gonna have a shit ton of counters on shit it's gonna be madness and with this card out there it's just gonna be stupid gruel war plow you got all these angels, but there's no trample, Mr. Moss. Guess what? Gruel Warplow. It's a four drop. Creatures you control have trample. I don't even give a shit about the secondary ability. We're just using it for its trample. This card I thought was strictly dope. Dragon Throne of Tarkir. Legendary artifact equipment for four. Equipped creature has defender and... Two, tap the card. Other creatures you control gain trample and get plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is this creature's power. Equip for three. Just imagine if you get a Johnny Goldmane out, you get that, let's say, for F's sakes, a 50-50 freaking token out, and then you use that card with this, uh, with this equipment. Oh my god. Think about that devastation. You are going to deliver a pounding to your opponent. <laughs> Nastiness. Uh, there's probably a better card out there I could have used, but I got a Tamio's Journal. I just like that if you sacrifice three clues, you can search your library for a card. It's basically like a tutor ability. Pretty nasty. And also at the beginning of your upkeep, investigate until you tap two, you get to draw an additional card. Not bad. One of those. Path to Exile, you gorgeous, gorgeous card. We got four of those nasties right there. So four Path to Exiles. Now for a sideboard. Kind of an interesting sideboard. Well, let's take a look. Skadoosh. Rest in Peace. When Rest in Peace enters the battlefield, exile all cards from all graveyards. In case people like to go digging in their shit, I mean, at least have one of these in the deck. If we hit it, you know, uh, whatever, it'd be nice. Uh, but it definitely helps out a lot. Consulate Crackdown, just because uh, I had two of these on the sideboard. Probably should have two in here, but whatever. I'm down to one right now, um, just because it's artifact heavy in modern. So, Consulate Crackdown for five. When Consulate Crackdown enters the battlefield, exile all artifacts your opponent's control until Consulate Crackdown leaves the battlefield. Not bad. Consulate, stupid. Say it right. Okay, good. Privileged Position. Other permanents you control can to the target of spells or abilities your opponent's control. That is nasty. It takes five to bring that out. That's how that works. You can either pay a forest or you can pay a planes for it. That's how it works. So one or the other. So you can pay two colorless and three planes. Total of five mana and it's paid for. Yay. Norn's Annex. This means it's Phyrexian life. You have to pay either a planes or two life. Norn's Annex. Creatures can't attack you or a planeswalker you control unless their controller pays that white Phyrexian mana for each of those creatures. Nastiness. Gift of Estates should probably be in the main board, but it is not. Don't ask why. I just, actually, I'll be honest. I didn't like the white border on it, and I didn't have a black border one, so I'm like, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to put this in my main board for the video purpose. Oh my god, you guys think I'm nuts. Whatever. If an opponent has more lands than you, search your library for up to three planes cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle your library should really be in the main board but it's not at the moment collective efforts just for a little bit more of that uh removal shit it's got the escalate tap and untap creature you control and you can do even more choose one or more destroy target creature with power four or greater destroy target enchantment or put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls nastiness wrath of god because why the hell not just a board wiper 
sudden disappearance. I think this card's great. If it was instant speed, it'd be a little bit different, but whatever. I don't think it really matters, to be honest. Someone's gonna be like, yeah, it does! Trigger, that's it, son of a bitch. All right, uh, exile all nine land permanents. Target player controls. Return the exile cards to the battlefield under their owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. That's crazy because let's say it's kind of an even match out there. You just drop this thing out, then you swing, and then you win. We'll see ya. Good game, sir. Because uh, everything's exiled from on their side of the board. So well, they can't do shit, you know? Pretty nasty. If they can't block, at least. Mass calcify. Destroy all non-white creatures. Why would you not want to do that? That sounds like a really good card. Uh, the casting cost is why it's on the sideboard. But anyway, for seven. Destroy all non-white creatures. It's insane. Sarah Ascendant. I actually had two of these in the main board. I ended up taking them out. However, it worked better without it, but it's a nice card. Sarah Ascendant has lifelink. It's a one drop. As long as you have 30 or more life, Sarah Ascendant gets plus five, plus five, and has flying. Not bad. That way, uh, it's kind of like a, like, a, like a slumbering dragon, you know? It's just waiting. It's waiting to come out and just whoop some ass. All right, Grand Abolisher for Deuce. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifacts, creatures, or enchantments. Get that control going a little bit, baby. Avid Mind Sensor. Of course, just however your opponent's playing or, you know, his deck is, that's kind of what you want to do. Uh, you'd be swapping cards like this in and out just to match it, you know, try to help out. Flash, flying. If an opponent would search a library, that player searches the top four cards with that library instead. Maybe he's running a bunch of tutors. Maybe he's running, I don't know, a bunch of other shit. Well, that'd be a good time to use that card. Thalia's Lancer. First strike when Thalia's Lancer enters the battlefield, you may search your library for Avelson. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. No, it says legendary card, but yeah, you get it. Platinum Angel. Didn't make the main board because we're going to be getting so much damn life. The only deck that's really going to... Uh, not stand a chance. There's a lot of decks that can beat this deck, but this deck can beat a lot of other decks. It's just magic, baby. That's the beauty of it. Platinum Angel. Flying. You can't lose the game and your opponents can't win the game. What? Yeah, that's insane, but because uh, the one deck that's really going to be kicking ass is probably uh, uh, Infect deck. If, if I ran my freaking $20 budget deck tech against my Angel Lifelink deck, uh, yeah, I'd freaking lose. So there you go. Um, but... Uh, you're not always going to be up against Infect in Modern. Not very typical. Uh, Infect's kind of gone away a little bit. Maybe my deck tech made it a little comeback. I don't know. Anyway, Platinum Angel, 4-4. Four, four. Pretty sick. And last but not least, awesome Commander card. My fingernails are dirty. Guys, I'm sorry I didn't bathe for this one. God. Yard work. I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to wash my hands. Creatures you control have Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste. And protection from black and from reds, a 7-drop. That is stupid. Awesome. Great in Commander, too. One of those. Well, you've seen it all. And this this is not in the sideboard, but it was just an honorable mention. And that is the beginning of each end step. If you gain 4 more life this turn, put a 4 for a white angel creature token with falling out of the battlefield. Because why the hell not? All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck tech. If you uh, like it, I don't know, give it a share. Hit the thumbs up. It means a lot to me. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you guys next time in one of my deck tech videos. As always, peace, love, and anal.